Well, this is what it looks like driving the Toyota Hybrid. Super quiet. And this is the road. I'm just coming back from work. And now we have extra parking outside of the gate, which is pretty neat because uh, after the shift, this is the second day when I'm just I have my hiking poles with me, so I put my uh, weighted vest. I think I have about 40, 45, 46 pounds in that thing. Definitely felt uh, um, the weight. So did the same distance like yesterday. Just went on this dirt road from the parking lot about 10 minutes. So basically one kilometer one way and then one kilometer back. Two kilometers, so 20 minutes. A very good exercise you know especially with a weighted vest and so yeah this is the road you see it's pretty well actually it's this way it's better uh, there's another shortcut going that way like this now I'm going north but this is the road they want us to take so this section is actually better than the one going south and I, I want to show you the, the hills. So, this is one section, dirt road. And this is the second. So, as I always say, whenever you're filming, always come to a complete stop at all stop signs. As a courtesy to your viewers what look at this now temperature now is plus 5 C which is about uh, 41 F I think yeah because 50 F is plus 10 and today was another interesting day I did a bunch of moved a bunch of stuff like I even one of the goals they gave me I moved again a fuel tank with forks from a fuel island to a tool crib where all the tools are then they asked me to move to move um, compactor attachment the technical term is a hole packer it's like a pretty hefty attachment that an excavator can pick up and then you know compact the ground in the trench and I tried it with a bucket no, nothing it's keep sliding and there was other equipment around so I quickly you know it's so easy now like for me I really I'm really used to it now so I just know how to quickly uh, unhook the bucket and hook up the forks there was forks in there and I was able to use one one fork and there was a hole in that uh, packer and I just lift it like this and then I went back to my bucket and I just dropped it in the bucket and brought it the guy wanted me to bring it to uh closer to the office and then we did some uh what did we do oh i was assisting an excavator so excavator was like a mini excavator was walking near the trench and and he was uh spreading the dirt and the trench was 50 percent full and then there were some workers laborers in the back there and my job was you know whenever he saw like a hole or a dip he would you know signal me and he'd say hey one bucket here or a little bit here and so i was basically again assisting assisting the excavator and then we had all of a sudden we had a big safety meeting in the middle of the day because somebody got a minor injury and they sent him to uh, they sent him to a hospital and so I thought it was just us like just equipment guys no the entire site shut down for like 30 minutes and safety guys were grilling us about you know how to stay away from equipment but the, the big point was if you're not sure how to operate something if you were not trained and a supervisor is asking you to operate it refuse you know 
so basically yeah that's I think that's what happened one guy was trying to operate something he was not too sure about but you know it's a big construction site so stuff happens you have to be careful uh, I'm always trying to avoid other skid steers you know I don't like following each other and then dumping material in the same spot and turning around so I always try to use a you know parallel lane just you know my trucking experience learned uh, taught me to uh, you know stay away from other machines or other pieces of equipment but so yeah some guys quit yesterday all right because of these new shift hours but We still had lots lots to do and actually they're saying there might be some overtime if somebody wants to work this weekend but I don't know about that because I have to drive back to Calgary to pick up my Jeep which is definitely more suited for these you know dirt roads than this uh, car because this one is so low you know it's like if there's snow here I think I might get stuck in this because it's not a 4x4 it's just a regular front wheel drive at least my uh, my Jeep actually this is the spot I did it I, I was doing a video about right like when it was very slippery so I was afraid to go fast so I, I kept my foot on the brake and turns out my Jeep has a uh, uh, feature I think it's called hill assist and if you but it must be a steep hill I don't know if this one will qualify but it's kind of like for off-roading you know when you go down a steep hill um, that feature will will allow you to brake without using the brakes all the time it's kind of like user uses uses the engine not sure how it works if somebody knows uh, leave a comment below but yeah so the Jeep has a bunch of features and some people were saying yeah Jeeps are junk I don't think so or Chrysler is junk like I had the Ram 1500 right I had the Challenger 392 uh, I'm just naming Chrysler products right I had Dodge Charger I had Dodge Hellcat and now on my, I'm on my fifth Chrysler vehicle, Jeep. And Ram was also assembled in Mexico. And I never had any issues with it, you know. But that one didn't have adaptive cruise control. It was not as feature packed, you know, as this Jeep. So it's of course nice to have all these creature comforts, right? Um, Jeep is much more advanced because also it's a top trim it's not the regular Jeep Compass, it's uh, Jeep Compass Trailhawk Elite. It's pr I think it's the most expensive compass you can get. And so the price was uh, 50 grand Canadian. And so this is the first time I ever have this, where the display just, I don't know, shortens out, turns, turns itself off, and then that stupid automatic emergency braking um, shuts down and makes all types of cruise control unavailable yeah you see this like this is really interesting scenery over here so basically the town of Drumhill is is, is kind of like in this valley right and then you go through the same hills like now we're going south entering um, Drumheller and then when you're leaving going south you, you're going through the same stuff, you know? And then, of course, Alberta usually is flat. And then it just, you don't see these. Like, this is very unusual. You know, and Drumhill, of course, is famous for this um, museum. And so they have statues of all these uh, prehistoric animals everywhere. But this drum heller, it's, you know, because I've been here, what, this is my fourth week. It already feels like, almost like home, because I already know all the stores, uh, you know, restaurants, like where to go 
grab some food I know the hotels and there's only so many of them here now this guy here this K Whopper T800 dry drive hooked up to uh, I think it's a season neck uh, no it's just what they call a tall boy you know like uh, for oil fields so three axle three axle uh, trailer four axle truck that's like perfect for Alberta and this guy ever since I came I started uh, the job on October 4th and I saw this truck parked here and I thought okay so the trucker you know got tired of sleeping uh, sleeping in the truck so he just went to the hotel but then I'm coming then I'm leaving Friday of course going back to Calgary I come again Monday next week he's still here and so it's been five weeks that this truck has been sitting in the same spot. I wonder what happened to him. And so here's there's a bridge, there's a river. I'm not sure what it's called. So I just want to show you, give you a brief tour of the of the glorious town of Drumheller. So the main street is called Santa Street and this blue sign on the top says downtown next left yeah where the red truck was turning and this set of lights is amazing you know I never saw lights that last so long like red you know when it's red I see people I see people actually go into the parking lot <laughs> that's the one guy <laughs> because there's you know you, you wait like this at an intersection but that red stays for like three minutes so I saw one guy turn right because of course that's legal but then he went into the parking lot and emerged on the other side and continued driving <laughs> I'm like what the heck is he doing and then I got stuck there quite a few times and I had the same idea but I did not do it because you know because I don't think that's right so yeah so this is a big turn over here two lanes turn left and this circle K is open 24 7 that's where I come in the morning to grab coffee and they have a beans to cup super nice coffee I know there's a Starbucks somewhere here but I never I was I did not find it yet And this is how I basically I go when I go home to Calgary. There'll be a turn, Highway 9, and go this way. And there's a sign that says Calgary. But here, like there's a, oh yeah, Starbucks over there. But I think Starbucks, it's inside, it's inside this, it's not a standalone building, it's inside a store. But here we have Canadian Tire, somewhere there. Oh, Friesen Brothers. I think it's like a grocery store. Never been there. But we have a A&W Burger. Yeah, Canadian Tire. And we have McDonald's. And then just slightly further down, there's a Boston Pizza. So yeah, today I've decided to go for a double Big Mac. No cheese. Oh, and there's uh, Edo Japan. That's another restaurant. I never, I never went in there to eat. But remember when I was doing that stint, stunt with the food delivery, I saw quite a few times people were actually ordering from this 
Edo Japan and, and pretty much it's like sushi sushi restaurant So time to go grab a burger. I think I'll go uh, I'll go eat it at my hotel. At least I can watch TV, watch some YouTube. Thanks for watching boys and girls. Be good.